This was a quite unexpected trip as I just recently returned from three and a half weeks on the Canning Stock Road. The opportunity to attend this trip presented itself and given that it was a three desert cross country trip which required permission for a lot of the land we were traveling over, I couldn't say no to this trip. Yeah, I'm on my way to Orange, then on to Petersboro well, in two days, so I get a couple of hours out of the way today and then it should be just two good days to Petersboro where I'm gonna meet up with the rest of the boys and then we're heading in the Simpson again which I really very much look forward to. If you drive through Petersboro it is advisable to stop and have a look at the Steamtown Heritage uh, Rail Center where you can wander through very old steam locomotives see the carriages and, and get a good idea how the Australian railway system developed. Pretty fancy. The first class carriages and the saloon were pure luxury, especially for that time period. Hey yeah, guys, uh, pretty fresh morning here at Petersboro. I stayed the night at uh, Judith and Willem's Kempen place, um, which was fortunate in the caravan because it rained and it was pretty damn cold. I think we've got most of the group now here and uh, yeah, filling up, doing the last little things and then we're heading off in the desert. Can't wait! It was a rare sight for me to see that many dark clouds over the Flinders Ranges. It is interesting to see what huge holes and vast areas these coal mines cover in the outback. The mine closed in late 2015 and Flinders Powers is currently in charge of remediating the mine site. When you drive through Lyndhurst, it's worthwhile to drive into Talk Alf and let him explain you his unusual way how he sees the world. He certainly also is a gifted sculptor. Because they go boom, boom, boom. So the stick was called the boomerang to chuck at the boomers. Well, over the years they had other uses for it. Clapping the music with the kids, digging sticks. And they sculpted it out a piece of wood so good they even got it to go around and come back again. And started the world's journey to the stars. When you drive out of Lindhurst, it's well worth to stop at the ochre pit. This is an extensive area of Aboriginal ochre mining. And it used to be a meeting and trading point for the indigenous community. The best time to visit the ochre pits is at sunset, where the colors are absolutely spectacular. Unfortunately, we couldn't wait that long. <laughs> First night at Coward Springs. Coward Springs, Sunrise, yeah, Coward Springs has a little spring obviously, last time I missed that swimming in it so it's not warm warm but 28 degrees. Springs Little Museum. While a lot of the guys went for an early morning flight over Lake Eyre from William Creek, I decided to have a look at the Wapmakadabu Mount Spring Conservation Park at some of the Mount Springs. The name of the conservation park is derived from the Arabana language name used for the local feature, also known as Hamilton Hill. Mount Springs are a natural feature which occur when water from the Great Artesian Basin reaches the surface through cracks in the overlying rock. As this water evaporates, it deposits soils and sediments which form the characteristic mound that the springs are named after. 
along the Odnadetta track are quite a few old railway sidings. Unfortunately, even out here you have grubs who start spray painting some of that remaining structures. On our way to Helican Bay, we stopped at Caroline Grossmüller's memorial. She's a tourist who died here after their car got bogged and they decided to walk back to William Creek. Gatti Tundra actually contains the lowest natural point in Australia, which is around 15 meters below sea level. If Lake Eyre is full, it is the largest lake in Australia, covering 9,500 square kilometers. This is an old bronco which was used to catch the stock and then confine and brand it. What you see here is halite, uh, also known as rock salt, which is hardly compressed uh, salt deposits uh, from Lake Eyre. What happened? Yes, it is very soft. Well, pretty soft here. Everyone gets stuck left front center. The guys who were stuck managed to extricate themselves and we found a different way forward. And tire pressures were adjusted again. However, with quite a few IFS vehicles and some of them with normal tire sizes, uh, it was clear that we would have a few more uh, that's, box. Uh, pretty cross country, heading to a uh, nice location. And yeah, got a few vehicles stuck. Actually quite some big wombat holes. I would suspect that we maybe have people stuck here soon again. Good suspension travel is certainly helpful here. The clay pans are soft, you see mud everywhere. Um, would be very surprised if one got get stuck there. Uh, when we see him, we'll pop high. Stefan, where about to you? I'm seeing you, Maid. I'm nearly at your location. While Dave attended Jared, who was properly stuck, I scouted a bit forward to find the camp spot for the night. The clay pans were very soft and we made an effort to stick to one wheel track and drove as close as possible to the edges. Yeah, mm, I've got a rough idea where we're going. The other guys, Dave, is with Jerb, who got himself properly bogged there. And trying to find a way through here. It's uh, like we a found a beautiful camp spot right on the edge of Lake Eyre, on top of the dunes <laughs> overlooking the lake. <laughs> mm. I promise, I haven't left it. Uh, pretty long day, so it's time for Reddix. One of their test um, series five trial, grass-fed lamb, mint, rosemary. After a good night's sleep, we went up fairly early to watch the sunrise above Lake Eyre. Unspoiled sand. Water only reaches Lake Eyre every few years when it floods and Lake Eyre is only completely flooded um, a few times in a century. Ah, Sunday morning, my first tire stake on the Cam 3s, mind you, big hardwood, I mean, that just would have gone in there anyway, so fixed the tire haven't used my jack on that car uh, found out that needs a bit of TLC but um, yeah all good we'll see how long that side will last I guess now with the plugs in it yeah one thing I realized is that my JMAC PEM my tire deflator or inflator actually doesn't work with the completely um, flat tire so I gotta find something else here yeah? Um, because it seems to need some back pressure to determine the pressure and then pump up otherwise it won't open the valve and won't put any air in I didn't really consider that so something new I learned 
and uh, we'll make some adjustments here, I guess. Yeah, that is wild country, completely trackless. Our trip leader, Dave, uh, with his eagle eyes, found some remnants of the indigenous Quite occupation here at the time. That's an old bit of an old grinding stone. So Aboriginal. It's a lunch spot between the wattle. Some issues with the fridge. Doesn't cool anymore. Ian and Ray managed to get themselves stuck when parking up for lunch. It was easy enough to extricate him with a gentle snatch. The experience level in the group varied greatly from very little four-wheel drive experience to a lot. Dave promised Rich and Bev that they would see camels, but so far he had only delivered dead camels. This was all pristine dune country and it's very hard to see the angles and how steep the dunes really look when you stand on top of them. There is no track in front of you, you can't really see where you drive and you have to make your way down there. The best way to drive these steep dunes is straight down, first gear low and just let the engine do the work while you idle down in a straight line without touching the brakes if possible. 40 degrees is a pretty decent angle and if you're not used to that it really feels like uh, you dropping down somewhere. In this case it was not actually a tire failure but a bent rim which let the air escape. With Dave who pretty much is a one-man workshop uh, again in action that was solved very quickly. The 200 series being a very capable vehicle but still IFS, the lack of suspension travel showed uh, in certain instances that you actually can't beat solid axle with the good uh, suspension. Trying to find a camp spot for the night and me being behind Dave and Pete we got ourselves into some horrible terrain and uh, Dave behind me was uh, stuck on top of one of the big spinifex bushes and uh, he used me as a ground anchor to winch himself out. As it was quite late and a few of the guys were stuck we decided to backtrack yeah. uh, to the clay pan where we changed uh, the tire and camped there for the night. Ray had recently some wiring done on his vehicle and that didn't work very well and his fridge was not working. So Dave, the one-man mechanical garage and Rich, who has also mechanical and electrical background, decided to rewire the vehicle quickly. So D David, what's happening? You rewiring the whole car now? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. As always I would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video and leave me a comment in the comment section. My YouTube channel is completely self-funded and it takes considerable effort, time and money to create these videos. If you like to support me in this, 
please consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon, where you can donate a small monthly contribution which will help me to cover some of the costs. For these you will receive early access to all of my videos.